Well, I'm sure you've heard by now, but Donald Trump has survived an assassination attempt. There's a lot of details continuing to unfold about it. So please know as we get in this episode, it's going to be an incomplete episode in that we don't have all the details or all the, uh, you know, information yet that we would like to have. That's going to be coming over the coming days, I'm sure, as the investigation is ongoing. Let's get into it. I'm going to break down exactly what happened and what this means for the country going forward with the Donald Trump attempted assassination. America is no longer one nation under God. Are you ready to fight for a revival? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. As we get started, I do want to mention that there are obviously were two people dead so far from the attack, the sniper himself, so um, with him, and then we also have one spectator who was protecting his family. He got killed as well from one of the stray bullets. We have other people who are wounded and in critical condition, so we will be praying for them, obviously. I'm praying for them. I hope you join me in that, um, and I do hope, obviously, of course, I've been praying that God is glorified through this somehow, he brings people to himself. It's kind of a good picture that life is fleeting, and it, it really brings people, you know, when they're this close to death, even President Trump, um, you know, it kind of shows you, you know, it, it's a reminder that life is fleeting and can be taken from us at any moment. So I do hope that uh, people come to Christ through this, and uh, I hope that goes for President Trump as well, who I don't believe is saved, but um, I do hope he does come to Christ through it, and we'll obviously be praying for those families of loved ones who have been shot or uh, who lost their lives as well. <clears throat> so let's get into, I'm going to uh, read a little bit about the guy, the one spectator so far that has died at the end as well from an article. Uh, just a quick overview though, the rally was in Butler, Pennsylvania. The uh, shooter was from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, which is about an hour away. Uh, Thomas Matthew Crooks, as he was identified reasonably quickly within a few hours, opened fire from a rooftop with a semi-auto rifle. Uh, that is, you know, could have been an AR-15, could have been an AK-47, a style of rifle like that. Rooftop was about 150 yards away by best estimates. What we don't know is why was there a sniper on a rooftop 150 yards away? Because, uh, you know, per standard protocol, any building in the area would be cleared and checked by the Secret Service. Often they would have their own snipers or some, some sort of security on those buildings. So it's very weird that someone was just on that building unattended. Um, the BBC interviewed a person after the fact who claims that he saw the guy on the rooftop and I believe he and his friends were pointing out to the police that were there saying, look at this guy, he's up there. And they were just kind of pointing at him. And <clears throat> he said in the interview, he was wondering why uh, the guy was still on the roof and why Trump was still on stage speaking. So we can't verify that for sure was the case. I don't know that there's really going to be a way to verify that. We'll see. Um, it could be true. It certainly could be true. It might also be that, you know, he's someone who's just jumping on the, the wagon, so to speak, to try to gain, you know, to his 10 seconds of fame. But um, there obviously was some sort of security lapse, whether or not that happened. The fact that the man was allowed on a rooftop about 150 yards away, well within range of a normal hunting rifle or a uh, semi-auto rifle like an AR-15 or an AK-47. Um, so that is certainly a security lapse, and that's definitely going to be investigated. Um, as far as the you know, the wounding and the casualties went. Trump was shot in the right ear. You can see in the video, he kind of reaches up. It's almost like he's swatting a fly away. But, um, and then the picture is following. You can see he has blood on his right ear and kind of coming down his face. Um, security, Secret Service responded really quickly. There was the first, I think one or two shots did not hit Trump because it took a second for him to kind of reach up towards ears. So I believe it was the second or third shot hit him. There was a one or two shots after that, then it paused. As I get, I'm assuming the shooter kind of re-scoped in, re-aimed, and then, and then shot another few rounds. The Secret Service was on him by that point. Trump got down. The Secret Service jumped all over him. And um, so he didn't get hit any more than just the one time. And very, very close to hitting his head or hitting it more seriously. So we're grateful that didn't happen. Um, again, several bystanders were hit. We don't know exactly how many. Uh, we do know, again, the one was killed. We're going to read more about him in a minute. Two were critically wounded is what I'm hearing. And uh, there were more hit as well, less, uh, you know, less critically. Uh, the sniper was almost immediately taken out of action. Obviously, the Secret Service is trained for that. They're trained to know where a bullet came from instantly, and they did know it instantly, which um, I will admit is a little bit suspicious with the security lapse and the fact that that roof was uncovered, and then they instantly knew where he was and took him out within a few seconds. Um, again, it could just be really good training and a really good job by them. 
is something to think about as well. I don't want to, you know, seem like a, a entirely a tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist, but it is something to think about. It's questions that are going to have to be answered in the coming days. Um, it's not known if he acted alone or with an accomplice, only he was up there. He's the one that got shot. Um, there's no other suspected accomplices at this point, from what I understand. But again, there's going to be a lot of an investigation that goes on to this. They've already identified him. They're combing through all the social media and everything. It does not appear, from what I've seen from a headline, that he had any or many, at least, social media accounts. So they figure out where he lives. They figure out, you know, his family, et cetera, who he is. So I mean, I'm not going to give him that information, obviously, even if it does leak out there. We don't want to dox the family, obviously, who is likely innocent in the matter. It could be, you no know, he had he had a bad upbringing. I heard something about him being bullied at school from a from a former classmate. I think we're probably going to see the liberal media try to spin this into he's the victim here. That's what happens most of the time when a criminal commits a crime. They try to spin it into how somehow they're the victim. But again, we're not trying to get really political with this episode. As far as the political reactions go and the political fallout from it, um, politicians on both sides of the aisle responding well. Biden obviously gave a little press conference and a statement, or a speech and a statement, I should say, about it. Um, you know, said, no place for this kind of violence in America. <clears throat> I did find that ironic, seeing as how he has called MAGA the most extreme organization that's ever existed in history, in American history. That's a quote from him. Um, he said it during, I believe, his 2022 State of the Union address. And so, you know, in the media, after these years and years, eight years of calling him literally Hitler, you can't exactly say they're an innocent party in all this. But again, I digress. But um, the political reaction has been pretty... Um, have been pretty standard about what do you expect the liberal you know the really crazy liberal activists they're all saying yeah i know i wish trump had been hit I wish that bill bull had been a few inches closer but all the politicians are responding rightly you know we're horrified by this say you know they're saying no place for this in america very likely very in instance a very insincere uh statement but you know they're paying lip service to him at least and i will say i think biden can turn this into a win for for the for trump this is definitely a win the fact that you're trying to be assassinated, it does make him look like a hero. And for those undecided voters, it looks very much like the media and um, Biden administration were at least implicitly involved, if not explicitly. So, however, I think Biden can turn this into a win as well in a way if they can play the bigger man, so to speak, if they can, um, you know, act like, continue to act like they've been acting, talk about how, you know, they, they said they were suspending all their social media ads for a while and all their outgoing campaign um, output. So it looks good for them optically. We'll see if they can keep that up or if um, this ends up just being a complete win for Trump. Obviously, it's very sad that anything like this had to happen, and I'm certainly not happy that it did. But it is interesting strictly looking at it from strictly a political perspective. And obviously, as I mentioned at the top of the show, at the top of the episode, um, uh, we do hope that... You know, the Lord uses this to bring people to him. It is a reminder, life is fleeting, and, you know, it can be taken from me at any moment. Thankfully, you know, we know the Lord is sovereign. He controls it all. So we are um, thankful that no one else died, but it is very sad that one did. Again, all in the Lord's control, however. On that note, I would like to read an article about this guy and his heroic final actions. So I'm going to bring that up now. So this tweet I have pulled up here is from Ryan Fournier, or Fournier on Twitter. It says, Allison Comparatore, I believe is how you pronounce the last name, the daughter of the former fire chief killed yesterday, said it best, quote, he was the best dad a girl could ever ask for. And they have a picture of um, those two together, the uh, daughter, I believe, on her 20th birthday, and her father. I'll put these pictures up on the screen. Here's the article from Fox News. Family members identified Corey Comparatore as the rally goer who was killed Saturday in an assassination attempt on former President Trump in Butler, Pennsylvania. Comparatore was a former fire chief for Buffalo Township, local news station reported. He was shot and killed when Crooks, the criminal, opened fire on Trump from a sniper's perch some 130 to 150 yards away. I believe that's about the best guess. Um, during the campaign event, two others were critically injured in the attack, authorities said. The victim's sister, Don Comparatore Schaefer, who wrote in a Facebook post that Corey, quote, was a hero that shielded his daughters. Quote, his wife and girls just lived through the unthinkable and unimaginable. My baby brother had just turned 50 and had so much life left to experience. Hatred has no limits and love has no bounds. Pray for my sister-in-law, nieces, my mother, sister, me, and his nieces and nephews, as this feels like a terrible nightmare, but we know it is our painful reality, Schaefer wrote. <clears throat> his daughter also wrote a tribute, and I'll leave it here for you, says the writer of the Not the Bee article, Pray for This Family. Allison Comparatore. <clears throat> Yesterday, time stopped, and when it started again, my family and I started living a real-life nightmare. What was supposed to be an exciting day that we had all looked forward to, especially my dad, turned into one of the most traumatizing experiences someone could ever imagine. 
I know the media will cover this event. I'm going to try my best to stay away from looking at everything, especially because I've already seen and lived through it in real time. But I want everyone to know what the media will not cover and will not say about him. He was the best dad a girl could ever ask for. My sister and I never needed for anything. You call, he would answer, and he would do whatever it is you needed. And if he didn't know how, how he would figure out, even if he, and if he did not know, he would figure out how. He could talk and make friends with anyone, which was he was do what he was doing all day yesterday, and loved every minute of it. He was a man of God, loved Jesus fiercely, and also looked after our church and our members as family. The media will not tell you that he died a real-life superhero. They're not going to tell you how quickly he threw my mom and I to the ground. They're not going to tell you that he shielded my body from the bullet that came at us. He loved his family. He truly loved us enough to take a real bullet for us. And I want nothing more than to cry on him and tell him thank you. Um... Sorry, I lost my spot. I want nothing more than to wake up and for this not to be reality for me and my family. We lost a selfless, loving husband, father, brother, uncle, son, and friend. I'll never stop thinking about him and mourning over him until the day I die, too. July 13th will forever be a day that changed my life. I will never be the same person I was less than 24 hours ago. There are a lot of children out there that say their dad is their hero, but my dad really is mine. I don't think I would be here today without him. Dad, I love you so much that there aren't enough words to express how deep that goes. I know that you'll... <laughs> She says, I know you'll give heaven some uh, word I will not repeat. I know that God is proud of the man that came to his gates yesterday. Um, and not to be says, hero, well done, good and faithful servant. So um, it does appear that it sounds like from her father that hopefully he was a believer. It does sound like it. Obviously, I can't say that for a fact, but I'm very thankful if indeed he was. And again, the uh, what we need to be praying for is not only for these families and that the Lord gives them comfort, but that he brings people to him through it. Uh, thank you for watching the episode, everyone. If you have any more additional details, feel free to put them in the comments and keep everyone updated. I'll try to do my best on the channel of doing that as well.